Hello, pre-calculus students. You probably think you know everything there is to know about a line. I mean, how tough can a line be? I think you're gonna learn some new things about lines in this lesson. So we know that the, uh, let's just start, let's get going right into it. We know that a line is of the equation y equals mx plus b, that's slope intercept form. And a line will always make some angle with the x-axis. Here it makes an acute angle, here it makes an obtuse angle. But that angle, called the inclination of the line, will always be less than 180 degrees or pi. That's kind of important. Now let's uh, take a look at a different picture here. <coughs> what you might not know is that this angle here, angle theta two for this line, that's its inclination. The, if you take the tangent of that line, I'm sorry, the tangent of that angle, you get the slope of the line. So the tangent of the inclination is the slope of the line. So if it's an acute angle, it'll be positive. If it's an obtuse angle, the slope will be negative. If you want to find the acute angle between two lines, here's our formula for it. Since it's acute, it will always be um, a first quadrant angle and hence positive. You should be able to figure out that this angle is theta and that this angle here is 180 degrees minus theta. Anyway, you should be able to solve for theta and you get that theta is this angle is theta two minus theta one. And since the tangent of that, we can use our difference identities that we learned in a previous chapter. And we know that the tangent of theta two is the slope of line two and the tangent of theta one is the slope of line one, because I told you that a few minutes ago. Here's our formula for the acute angle between two lines. <clears throat> so that's one thing that might be new to you about lines. Let's look at a different formula. <clears throat> so let's find the distance between a point and a line. So here's the point, and here's the line y equals mx plus b. You might think, we don't know anything else going into this, but we do know that the distance from the point to the line is going to be that perpendicular distance. And if it's perpendicular, then the slope of this segment has to be the negative reciprocal of this slope. So it's going to be negative 1 over m. So now we know a point and a slope. Isn't that interesting? And it turns out to just cut to the chase here. If you have a line in standard form, now some of us are used to standard form being AX plus BY equals C, but if you write it as AX plus BY plus C equals zero as your standard form, then in your point that you're trying to find the distance to is X1, Y1, this formula represents the distance from that point to the line. In other words, you take this equation of the line, substitute x1 and y1 into it, and divide by the square root of a squared plus b squared. We don't want the distance to be um, negative, although the negative does mean something. We're not gonna deal with that right now. So our distance is just going to be the absolute value. We can therefore find a, the area of a triangle on a plane. If I know these two points, or actually if I'm given these three points of a triangle, I can find the slope. I'm sorry, I can find the equation of the line between these two points. 
And then I could find the perpendicular distance from this point to this line. I now have a base and a height, and I could multiply them by one half um, to get the um, area of the triangle. How do I get this base? Well, I use the distance formula. <coughs> so in the textbook we're currently using on page 691, there's a problem that gives these three points on a triangle. So I can look here, this is going up three, let's see, over six, up three, three over six is one half. And so I know it's gotta be y equals one, the equation of this line has to be y equals one half x plus b. Um, so what am I substituting in here? Oh, if, uh, the point negative two, zero. So if I substitute negative two, zero, because it's on this line, I can solve for B. So here's the equation of the line between these two points. We have to rewrite it in standard form. AX plus BY plus C equals zero. So one times X1, and X1 here is zero, my, uh, minus two, times five plus two, and then I divide by the square root of one squared plus negative two quantity squared. So my height in is eight over root five. This distance here, if I use just the Pythagorean theorem, this is six, this is three, 36 plus nine is 45. So that base of this triangle is root 45 or three root five. So I can take, I now have a base and I have a perpendicular height, one half times the base times the height. Notice I kept it eight over root five, no reason not to. It's an interim calculation. If I had a square root in my denominator at the end of the problem, I'd rationalize the denominator. But you can see not doing it here makes life a lot easier because these root fives are going to cancel. And the area of the triangle that has these three vertices is 12. So we've done a little bit with lines. We've done a little bit with geometry. We've done a little bit with trigonometry. Boy, don't you think that's enough for one lesson? I do. Have a great day.